Audio Frontier. Larson. Oh, he's in. Hendrik Larson. That is sensational. Lambert. Oh, what a way to settle it. Nakamura. It's Tom Rogge. This is Celtic Daft with G4 Claims. Been involved in a road traffic accident? Get them now at notatfaultclaims.com. Welcome along to another episode of Celtic Daft where we take a look at the hoops in a wee bit more detail. As always, I am producer Ryan. I'm joined once again by the Kyogo Timaya Bada. It's Crystal. How are you doing, Chris? I'm doing my thing. Out on the wing. No, that's you that's out in the wing. I was Kyogo, you were a brother. To be fair, Kyogo was, Kyogo was in the wing the other day, so it was alright. Right. They're both on the wing. Yeah, we've only got one game to talk about, so that should be short and sweet. Much like your penis. That's a bit harsh, mate. That's, <laughs> that's Don't ask me how I know it's sweet. That's nice. <laughs> Everybody knows the reason why that is, Chris. Uh, right, before we crack on, just a reminder, subscribe to Football Daft wherever you get your podcast, Apple, Spotify, um, if you're on Apple, rate and review as well. And if you want any more bonus content, including video versions of Celtic and Rangers Daft, as well as the main podcast, Cameos for the Boys, and the chance to scalp Stevie Purden at FIFA, head to patreon.com forward slash football daft and become a member of the squad. Um, right, so Chris, we've got one game. Do it, do it, do it. Do it. Don't be a shite bag. If you, uh, right. bag if you want it. Exactly, exactly. Um, right, before we crack on we talking about the game, mate, I've got a wee mention. I put this in the chat the other day about my mate, John, and I, I feel the need to tell folk about the total brass neck of this. So we were sitting there all night. My mate John's da is pals are like a kit man at Celtic, right? So he's got a few few medals and stuff like that for players over the years, a few jerseys, he gets a few cool things. Um, a couple of weeks ago, he just put a photo up on Instagram about playing golf with Joe Hart. Right, so we're going, what the fuck are you playing golf with Joe Hart for? How'd that come about? So, told us whatever. So, sitting Friday night, having a few beers, and uh, we're like, try to wind up. Well, like, oh, so when's Joe coming round then for his dinner? And he goes, Sunday. <laughs> we're like, wait, what? He's like, ah, he's coming round on Sunday for his dinner. But like, don't talk pish. Went to the group chat on Sunday. What did he put in? A photo of Joe Hart sitting at his fucking dinner table, having a Sunday roast for his family. Like, what the what fuck is, is that about? How, what is this? How is this possible? I have no idea, mate. But... I mean, Barry Ferguson still comes round to mine on a Sunday for to, to watch a 2002-2003 Scottish Cup final and have a roast. But other than that, I've never heard of a footballer going to somebody's house for dinner. Bizarre. Absolutely bizarre. I was like, how did that come about? He went, ah, he just up here he's selling it. I'm like, fucking, <laughs> is he not get anywhere else to go? Is, do none of the players like him? It, mate, that's what I was thinking. Um, but we did ask him, and he did say that his hair was very, very fluffy and dandruff-free, so it's good. Well, aye, to be fair, if you're going to have anybody coming round for dinner, on a list, Joe Hart has to be head and shoulders above the rest. <laughs> hey! Right, that's us, mate. We're in. We're in to talk about the game then. So, like I said, just a one game to look back on, mate, this week. Celtic away to Motherwell, 3pm kickoff. What was your thoughts going into this one? A nice, boring match. You were expecting a boring match? No, I'm saying I, I thought it was quite it was quite pedestrian. Do you know what I mean? It was a good, solid performance. And that's something that we've been missing. Mm-hmm. Except when Joe Hart's trying to be fucking Johan Cruyff on the line. Jesus Mate. Christ, my heart mm-hmm. was in my mouth, man. I, I was directly behind that at the game and I literally marched nearly hit the flare. I was like, what what is have I doing? said? But the odds it far too long, didn't he? Aye. The odds it too long, and that's it's already come back to haunt him once, man. He shouldn't be trying that shit. But no clean sheet for him. Um, another away victory. Another absolute howitzer to a goal. And another it. another goal for handsome Dan on the left hand side. <laughs> right, we've we'll got a couple of couple of wee performances to talk about. Then. So there was no real shock with the team selection. Um, for, for Ange in this one except for the inclusion again of the horny one Ball and Golly made his return to the team what did you make of his performance overall? 
well, like I say to you the other day, I thought, well, just after watching the game, I thought he was solid. I thought he did a great game. So that he never put a foot wrong, never, never made an arse of anything. It was decent when he was coming in off the left. I thought he linked up well with Jota as well. Do you know what, man? He, he might fit this system, and I said that to you. Mm-hmm. I said that to you. He might, he might fit the system, and do you know what? If it wouldn't surprise me if he started the next game as well. I know, obviously, Taylor's out, but Montgomery had been getting a wee bit of action, and it wouldn't surprise me if uh, Bollingoli was still in there. Well, it would surprise me. It would surprise me. Because he's not registered for you know, yeah, for cup. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> Raging. No, listen, I um I take a bit of a ribbon on the, the main pod this week when Stephen discussed my texts that to the group chat about Nathan Patterson in the Scotland game. Right. And all of a sudden when I said Nathan Patterson was shite, he started playing well in both Scotland games. And the same thing happened to you. I text you on Saturday going, I think Bolly might be shite. For, that was maybe 20 minutes in. The rest of the game, unbelievable. You know, like you say, he seems to fit that that system quite well. He's he's up and down the wing. He's, he plays that kind of inverted fullback quite well. You know what, as well, he does his job without any airs or graces either. Mm-hmm. Fair, fair fucks to him, man. See if the guy's going to grab a second opportunity with both hands. You've got to, you've got to doff your cap to him, man. Fair play. Aye. Right. What did you make of the, the penalty decision later on, though, William? It's a bit of a this moment, man. Nah, it's never a penalty. <laughs> never a penalty, but I think um, I, the, the handball, it, what was he thinking, man? I don't know what he's done. He's just kind of <laughs> took a swipe at it. I think he, he's noticed the ball isn't passing. He just went, boom. Yeah, it just like, stuck a hand out for like a jab. <laughs> it was like a jab, wasn't it? I, I, did, I did see all of the, all the stuff on Twitter, though. I've seen a lot of stuff on Twitter. No, sorry, mate, I've seen People saying, you know, it was a penalty, it was a penalty. But have you seen the, the video doing the rounds of the, the mother of boy who controls the ball first? He actually yeah. like handballs it first as he as he brings it down. There's a video doing oh, the rounds oh, on Twitter. Uh, he handballs it before Bolly ha- handballs it. Do you know, uh, I thought that at the time as well, but it was a different angle that we seen it for on the telly. So um I it was do you know what? Fuck it, man. Uh, I see Steve, there's been a lot of decisions going against this. Um and it's just a, it, it genuinely is just the consistency of Scottish referees. They're fucking dug me. Like, I and I know I don't want to get into this right, but but Portis is red card, right? And then you see a rebo's challenge, which mm-hmm. actually makes contact with a guy, and it, I don't think he even got a free kick. Do they? I don't think the boy even got a free kick for it. So the, sure. the consistency is good. I'm not saying that there's any bias because I don't think there is any bias. I just think they're fucking dug me. And the, at least in our game, it was a young guy that had come off for being the fourth official that made an arse it. Do you know what I mean? So, aye, fuck. Does it even itself out over the season? Who knows? But, you know, I think a lot of people keep a, a very, very fucking BDI on all of this sort of thing. So, aye. fuck it. Someone will tell you. Um, I, I mean, I've made the point before. I don't think there's any any bias in, in referees in Scotland. I think they're just all hopeless, to be completely honest. Yeah, I think they're, they're all partially like a, a, a howler, a game. Um, I think this guy, oh, all fairness to him, coming on for the the departed Willie Collum, who got a bit of injury, which took me by departed, surprise. Mate, for fuck's sake. <laughs> he departed no, the game. Departed I, the game. the field. <laughs> Aye, fair enough. Aye, but he, he went off and had to be the fourth official. Um, I don't actually know what happened. I was just watching it. I was like, ah, brilliant. It's not <laughs> often you see that, is it? But, I was just yeah. confused. I, I was totally confused. I just seen him talking to the, the medical staff and I was like, wondering what was going on. That's why I text you to see what the hell was happening. Um, and then you'd always put it in the chat saying what happened. But anyway, we scored a good couple of goals in this one. Uh, we take the lead after a great bit of play for... For Tam Rogic, firstly, Kyogo. Um, that wasn't a foul, regardless of what anybody wants to tell you. It was not a foul. Um, good bit of play for Rogic, who I thought played at his skin at the weekend as well. Slotting the ball through to George Michael himself, who slots the pass to Liam Kelly. Would you make this, this goal overall, mate? You're expecting him to go across the goalie, really, aren't you? And the fact he's went near post, balls, ballsy as fuck, man. 
Mm-hmm. But we had a few chances um, to, to wrap the game up more, I would say, in the second half. But the first the first goal was an absolute peach, man. It was a great, great pass for Norwich. And a great finish for Jota as well. And he's, like I say, he's getting better with every game. Right. Really is, man. And a bad one is James Forrest. Tell me. Bold. It doesn't, Bold it doesn't affect the game. And then there's one game where he'll pop up and he'll score a hat trick or something like that. He's <laughs> just another James Forrest, but I still like him. Fuck it. I, I thought he did have his best game. I think him and Ralston doing that right hand side. Bit of a tricky game for the two of them. Um, a bad this crossing was woeful as well. Stop it. There was, Quite a few times where you're you're looking going right, put the ball in the box and it's like out for a throw in. Totally clears the players. I so. said that to you. I, I messaged you and I say his his final ball is absolutely shocking, but mm. that'll come. You know what I mean? That'll come. He, he displayed that he, he did have a good final ball earlier in the season, so we know that it's there. It's just uh, like I said, with the referee, it's just a wee bit more consistency. All right. I think when you when you know that he's got it in his locker, you're you're not too worried about it. You know, for a couple of games when you know that he can. He can pull it out every now and then. Um, second goal, mate, for me was the epitome of Ange ball. Um, if you look at the the video that the Celtic TV cameras put up, the kind of unique angle, it was right for the back. Nobody touches it from Motherwell. Comes with Joe Hart, works his way up the pitch. Good free flowing football. Topped off a quite possibly a goal of the season contender for David Turnbull. That was great to watch, wasn't it? It was an Atamura goal. When it, it was like Nakamura's goal against Rangers. He just Aye. sliced right through it with the outside of his boot, and it starts at the on the goalkeeper's top right hand corner and ends up going into the goalie's top left. It was an absolute peach goal, an absolute belter, and it was good to see him and Rogic actually being able to play together, which I had been critically previously. Mm-hmm. I, I thought I, I didn't think Turnbull had the best game, to be honest with you, until but it doesn't, he kind of he kind of disappears at times, I think. Aye. And see when it's up against a like a higher level of opposition, I think he's really, really ineffective. But no, no disrespect to Motherwell. You know, it's he showed how good a player he was when he was at Motherwell. Do you know? So um and a wee we bit of touch a touch for him when he, he never celebrated the goal as well. Aye. You know, so shows a wee bit of respect. We also got a a kind of good look at our new striker, Jack Amakis. Um, what was your thoughts on on him? I thought he played quite well when he came on. I thought he was he was trying to make them kind of runs in behind. He had a couple of chances. I think he went, he went for an overhead kick at one point. He was kind of getting himself in the box and about it. What did you make of him? Mate, for what you've seen. Uh, I still haven't seen enough, Ryan, to be honest. It's early days with him. Um, he's, he's not played football for a long time, so I wouldn't expect him to be up to speed as quickly. Um, as some folk are wanting them to be. So, you know, just give the guy a few more games, a few more runouts, um, and then we'll be able to see what sort of player he is. But I'm reserving judgment on him you now. And what about um Kyogo as well, mate? You know, he, he had quite a quiet game. <clears throat> this one, he, he was relatively quiet, but he was still putting himself about. There was a, a good couple of chances that, um actually, was, there was two identical chances that he had that Ralston kind of lofts the ball just right over that that defender and Keogh goes running behind him. In the first one, he tries to square it. Um, and the second one takes a takes a shot. So, I mean, the chances were still there despite him having a, quite a quiet game. Um, um, would, you, would you make him overall? You need to remember as well, he's travelled half, well, he's travelled right around the world, basically, hmm. um, this week. So, you know, um, jet lag can, can be a factor. So, Again, I'm not bothered about the fact that he had a quiet game. What you say, they had a quiet game, but there was still opportunities there for him. Um, I just, I'm, I hope he gets his eye in quickly again, because it's, you know, there's another international weekend coming up soon. And that'll be the last one for a while, hopefully. So, you know, this is the drawback of having players that that hail for countries that are so far away, you know, and. Obviously, he he's uh, he's Japan, Rogic is Australia, but <clears throat> look, Rangers will find this. Like, I think there's an African Cup of Nations this year mm-hmm. again. I think there is, and 
like they're going to lose a Rebo and Sakala and um, I think there's another one, I'm, don't quote me on it, but I think there's another player that will be away for the African Nations for Rangers as well. So they're going to be missing players for their squad. And then uh, when they come back, they're going to be pretty fucked as well, having played a, having played an international tournament. So the, the one drawback you have in players that live so far away is that when they come back, it can take them a game or two to get back into the, the swing of things. So that, I think that's what we're seeing with, with Kyogo. Do you know what I mean? But we know what we know what he can do. So again, I'm not worried about about that. And just lastly on this game, then mate, before we we move on and take a look at the the European game tomorrow, well today now that we're listening to it, um, Carl Starfield, um, I thought he had a really really good game at the weekend. I thought he looked very calm. Aye, that's cut. the first time I've seen him not make an RC anything through again. Aye, you know, he, he just he looked very calm. He looked kind of. Assured himself. I don't know if that's maybe with Carter Vickers beside him. I don't know if he kind of brings that that calmness there. Um, I bet mean, I mean it's him in ball and golly beside him. Oh, he plays oh. on the left hand side of the defence, right. you know what I mean? And he's maybe more comfortable with ball and golly there because ball and golly can maybe get back and cover better than Greg Taylor can. Mm-hmm. You know, so it might it might be something along the lines. It could be Carter Vickers, it could just be the the confidence that comes from having a few clean sheets. Do you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. again, more power to him, man. But we need to make sure that it's the consistency is there. And I know I keep using that word, but it's that's what the, that's what the issue is here. It's yeah. consistency. Okay, so when this podcast goes out, mate, it's, it'll be Tuesday at three o'clock. Um, if anybody's listening very, very sharp to Celtic Daft tomorrow, they will probably be on their way to the game or getting ready to sit down and watch the game because we have a Europa League game that kicks off on a Tuesday at half past three in the afternoon. Um, uh, guess what? Ball and goal, I won't be playing. Really? Okay. I, I heard that he's uh, not registered. That's a big loss, isn't it? That'd be a big loss. Especially after the weekend when he's money a match. <laughs> um, I Fens Varos tomorrow, mate, or I'll we'll say tomorrow because we're recording today. Um, what you, uh, what's your thoughts going to this? Obviously, we've had a bit of a story with them in the past, putting us at the Champions League qualifiers. They obviously got to the group stage of the Champions League that year. Um, they've not quite made it this year. They're in our group. I think we're both we're, we're sitting kind of joint bottom, aren't we? We've both been beat twice. Nice. So it's a bit of a it's a bit of kind of battle between us two for third. I think if we if we get this these two victories, I think that pretty much cements third place for us. Um, because I don't see them beating anybody else or us, to be completely honest with you. Um, <laughs> Mate, did you see what Bayern Munich done to uh, fucking Leverkusen yesterday? No, what was the score? It was five nothing at half time. Oh, for fuck's sake. It finished 5 1, but when you look at what they done to us, and then you look at what Bayern done to them. <laughs> Aye, true. Thank God they're not in the Champions League, mate. I thank Christ. Um, I, what yeah, are you thinking, I, I, fully, I fully expect a victory on Tuesday. I'm going to go out and see it. I, I think we'll win. I think there's a chance that we could win comfortably, but the away, the away leg of the away game is is a different kettle of fish. Right. I think last time when we played Ferenc Varos, it was um, it was very disappointing to be put out by a team. At that point, we were like a team like that. Obviously, they've done quite well that season, so they're. They're absolutely no mugs, you know, despite the fact that people would have thought they were having not really heard of them, to be fair. Um, I, mean, but, I don't know if they still got the same squad, if half their team left. If, you, you don't know what you're dealing with. It's a different it's a different prospect altogether, you yeah. know, and, and obviously I'm a, I'm an absolute expert in all things Japanese football, but when it comes to uh, Hungarian football, you know, um. I'm not down with the kids. <laughs> I mean, look at their results, mate. Ferenc Varos are coming off the back of a, a loss at the weekend as well. Quite a disappointing loss by all accounts because I have read up my Hungarian football um, via Ange in his press conference today. He said it was disappointing, so I trust anything that man says. Um, I don't know. I think I agree with you, mate. I think this is a game that we should be we should be taking three points from. We should keep laying a bit of a marker down in a group as well, kind of showing that... I mean. <sighs> If you look at the games we've played, mate, the, the Betis game, we we could have easily won that game, but we crumbled. 
you know, that, that was a, a bit of our own doing. Uh, the Leverkusen game, first 20 minutes, we could have blown uh, him out the water. Their, their, their goal, he said the fucking game of his life. Exactly. That's so much so that UEFA actually posted the highlights of his performance on their Twitter. Do you know what I mean? So you, you know that somebody said a good performance when that happens. Aye. So, I mean, granted, I'm not going to make any excuses for the, the Leverkusen game. I think we, we lost that game and we probably deserved to lose over the course of it. You know, they, their class did shone, uh, shone through in the end. But the performances were there. So I think, granted, this game against Ferenc Faros tomorrow, I think we should win. I think we should be able to get a victory for this one. It should hopefully kick us on as well. Because, I mean... Um, Ryan, I'm, I'm basing my opinion on absolutely nothing, to be honest with you. I don't know. Ferns Varos could have added five Brazilian superstars to their squad, and I, I don't have any idea about it, do you know what I mean? But going off their other results, you know, it, mm. there's not much to separate us, but I just have a feeling that it's a game that we should be running away with. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll see how that one goes. Then, obviously, like I say, anybody listening just now, they'll be on their way to the game, or if they're listening after the game, this could be out of date. We could be beat 5 now. We don't even know. <laughs> so, <laughs> nah, it's not going to happen. We're going to win. We're, we are going to win tomorrow. Um, shall we do a, shall we do a, oh my God, I can't believe we get beat off Fernish Faros. And, but also we are, oh yeah, beauty, we, we beat Fernish Faros. And then people can just decide what one they want to choose. Well, he's the ultimate end in books that you get. He's I like to be there. <laughs> just pick your ending. Pick how you want it to finish. Right. Um, Aye, right, so we'll do a yes with one and we'll do a, oh no, we could beat. Right, so we'll do the, the win first, ready. Good victory that, Chris, wasn't it? Brilliant. First three points on the board in the Europa League. Excellent. And what about that goal, eh? <sighs> Screamer. I, I can't believe he's picked that up for 40 yards and drilled it top in. I know, especially for right back. Unbelievable, Unbelievable. man. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Joe Hart's going to Hedy as well. What's that I know. Couldn't believe it. Especially... Mental. Especially when he had to go off injured and Rogic had to go in goals. I thought the game was over. But, you know, just goes to show you. Uh, Big Tam used to play basketball as well and he can certainly get his hands on that ball, no bother at all. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Well played, Celtic. Right, let's see the other one now. Can't believe he could beat me. Ange, out. He's got to go. What the hell is he doing bringing on Peter Lowell? I can't believe he put Rogic in goals for the start. I know, but Joe Hart, remember Joe Hart played outfield for Man City and he done quite well. True. You can understand when you think of the big picture, you can understand his decision there, but, you know, like I said, we've just got to get behind the guy and, you know, what happens, happens, but as long as long as he's he's at the helm, he's going to have my support. End of story. I'm, I'm not going to lie, mate, I disagree with you. I want him out. He's got to go. He's got to walk now for that. That's. I mean, the fifth goal was a freak goal. Do you know what I mean? Like, like you can't blame Ange for that. How can I blame Ange for it? He put yourself at centre back. Of course, it was his fault. I know, but listen, if just because he forgot to register Carter Vickers in Starfield, it was it was in a it was in a tight spot. Anyway, listen, eight one is eight one, no matter where you look at it. So all the best to films for us for the rest of the tournament. But um I think we'll beat them when we go over there. Aye. We'll, we'll scrape a one now. I think we can go there. I'm confident. Right, anyway, that was fun. Um <laughs> what, uh, <laughs> what else? <laughs> <we> <laughs> <got>? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Fucking pile of fish. Funny but John Watson lays up the shot. <laughs> right, so just one bit of news then, uh Chris. That I want to pick up on this week. We've started to see Christopher Julian. Um, he's back in training. He's posting photos again on on Instagram. So I don't think he's too far away from getting back to the squad. Um, centre backs, Carter Vickers and Starfield. Question to you is: Does Julian walk back in that team? And if so, who's the to replace? Well, you know I've I've advocated for three at the back, mate. So I think he, he would. Obviously, once he's up to match fitness, come back into the team. Um, but I would like to see three at the back because I think the, the two the two centre halves get left far too exposed when the wing backs are firing up the, the pitch. And I understand that that's part of Ange ball and what have you. But 
you know, um, we need to we need to prioritise getting results above um, plenty of this <laughs> plenty of this philosophy that we know that he's that he's enjoying and he's starting to get some results and we are looking more solid defensively. But you know, a good team will still give us a torrid time. So mm-hmm. I'd like to see three at the back. Okay, I'll reword that question a little bit then. Um, if we're not going to go with three at the back, do you see him come back into the squad right away? Not right away. Um, he'll need to get a few games under his belt uh, just to get the fitness levels up. He's been out for a long, long time. Do you know what I mean? I, re- I remember we had a terrible injury like that. Obviously, it's not the same level injury, but we rushed. We we gave John. We got John Kennedy back into the team. And his knee just fucking buckled straight away. I know that's going back a few years, but and that was a career-ending injury. But you want to make sure that that's not going to happen, you know. So a few run outs. Uh, I don't. Can he play for the B team? I think he can. I don't see. I don't see why not. I think that's kind of what it's there for, isn't it? To because you know, guys not, like um, what's his... too much blood and thunder for him. Hmm, maybe you never know though. Like. He, there's guys, obviously, people like you and Henderson and stuff like that are kind of going between both both squads, so maybe they maybe they are able to kind of go between the, the B team and that. I will. It, either way, even if it's bounce games at Lennox Town or something like that, just to get his, his match fitness back up and get his eye in for the game again, because I don't want him coming back because he's, he seemed a bit nervous at times. Right? And, I, you know, if he's going to be worrying about his, his knee... Mm. You don't want to be, you don't want it to be in an important game, you know what I mean? So get yourself back up to fitness through some some bounce games or whatever, and then we'll see what where the land lies with the with the first team at the time when it's when it's time for him to come back. So just, a just, I answer on it. I was when it I just never commit to something, mate. Just commit to it. Is it does he walk back in the squad or no? no. Aye. <laughs> aye. Aye, does walk straight aye, back in. Straight back in. Um, okay, mate. The last thing that we, we need to touch on, obviously this, this is Celtic daft, but we do need to reference the fact that Rangers drop points. Um, actually, Rangers and Hearts drop points yep. um, the other day, which, which kind of... And Hibs, which kind of blows the table wide open again, I suppose, doesn't it? You know, we're sitting there fourth place, um, four points behind Rangers, three behind Hearts, two behind United. So... Uh, how you how you feeling for the season just now? You know we're now what's that nine games in, so we're, we're getting quite played, into it now. Played, played I heard something the other day saying, "Is this the point now where you can no longer say it's early in the season?" I think we're past that point now, where you kind of say it's early in the season. A lot of games to go. Like there's a lot of games to go, but it's not really early anymore. You know how do you kind of see it panning out over the next next few weeks at least? I think it's been so stop start because of international football, mate. It's you know, we've not had a right good run of games. You're saying that it's not early in the season. We've only played nine games. Do you know what I mean? But it feels as if the season's been going for about five months already. And we've only played nine games. It's weird, man. But I'm just I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying uh, watching them. Like I said at the start of the season, it's not gonna be boring. One way or the other, I'm, I try not to let uh, bad results affect me, like he says. Like I said to you, I'm going to every game without any sort of expectations, but they're starting to get some results now that are giving me a wee bit of hope for the rest of the season. So, you know, I, I think, I, I'm going to be honest, I think this season is going to come down to Celtic versus Rangers games. I really do. Um, we are four points off them. Even if we beat them, that's us. We've still not caught up with them yet. Mm-hmm. So um well, there's three games left. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to go out and say that we're definitely not going to do it because I, I think we have got the the opportunity to do so and January will play a big a big part in it as well. And um, because he's obviously identified the, the parts of the squad that he needs to strengthen. He's already told us that he's told us that he's looking in different markets. So you know, we'll see what January brings, but I'm, I'm just enjoying it, Ryan. It's better than last season, mate. And that's mm-hmm. that's all you can ask for. 
It's funny, actually, that you say that because I was going to ask you um, on that. We're sitting there currently five wins, one draw, three losses so far out of this. I bet what, we scored the most goals and we've conceded the least. And that's the thing, so that's what I was going to say. You know, we've is this Ange ball? Is this what we're going to be through the whole season? <laughs> you know, just like staying there, just staying close after the top that you're still going to be competing, but dropping, dropping points or gaining points, you know, thinking you're going to get them against games like Rangers, for example. Um, is that where you can kind of see it coming down to? I think so, mate, to be honest with you. But like I said, that I'm not going to any game expecting us to win because we've seen enough to know that it's not as cut and dried as that with, with any game at all, yeah. you know what I mean? So, fingers crossed. I mean, the, what dropping points at Dundee, to Dundee United now, Looks like a sore one, especially at home, because it could be so much closer than it is. I know it's only a two points of difference, but you know, if you're going into the next Celtic Rangers game, knowing that if we win, we then go above Rangers, then it's a different different story altogether. By the way, yeah. they they could drop more points in the lead up to that game, we, and and we could drop more points. None of the two is look as if we're world beaters this season. But they they look a lot more fragile than they were last season, mm-hmm. and like we we can only take uh, encouragement for that. I think it's like what Anne said the other day. You know, said to the reporter after the game, he said, "You know, I thought the the league the league was over, mate." He said, "I started looking at the league table," um, but then everyone to say, "We just run our own race and take care of ourselves," and it's true. You know, like you don't really stress too much about other games what we need to do is focus on Celtic winning games and that seems to have been the case in the last couple of games everybody knows what they're doing now I can kind of see I think he he said in his press conference that after the international break saying this is the most settled that he's seen the squad you know he's he's not giving anybody debuts there's nobody new coming in that's going to have to get to know the squad and stuff like that they're, they're just there now they play for Celtic they're part of the squad everybody knows their job and they're kind of battling through, and that's what I've seen the last couple of games. Obviously, we've got Ferenc Faros tomorrow. Um, our next three games, we've got two at home. You know, the, the two weekends, we are home with St. Johnson, home with Livingston, and we're away to Hibs in between. If we can get a result in these three games, I can see us soaring for that point. I can see us really kicking on, um, particularly with the Hibs game away. Big game, the big game for Easter Road. Aye. Right. I think if we can get something from that game, if we can get a win for that game, I can see us really, really kicking on. And I think it will make our teams take notice because I think there was a lot of kind of negativity about Celtic this season, about Ange coming in and you know the performances that we had at the start of the season weren't they very good. You know, the Hearts game, first game of the season, losing that. Um, and I think everybody was just kind of doubting us a little bit. Whereas if we can pick up a victory in these three games, would you reckon, mate? I can see us really, really kicking on for that point. Saying nothing, mate. I'm saying nothing. I've I've learned my lesson for last year. I'm not going to dive in and say, "I if we win these games, and that's it," you know. But I I think the the three games against Rangers between now and the end of the season will have a huge bearing on what happens. And as long as we can keep building bit by bit, week by week, and Putting in that, like that was a workman like dogged performance against Motherwell. They done really well, you know. Um, by the way, Motherwell are a good side as well. I have to say, mm-hmm. I thought they played really well. Um, but if we can, if we, oh, I don't want to say that's like the performance of champions because that's that's a sort of game that last season we wouldn't have won. That's that's what I'll say. That was, that's the sort of game last season that we went to win. And maybe even earlier on this season, that's the sort of game that we maybe went to win. You know, so <clears throat> I think going forward, I've got... Um, what's the word? I'm really positive looking at what's ahead. And like I said, I'm just going to enjoy it for what it is because it's been far more enjoyable nine games in this season than a full season was last year. So... Bring the rest of the season on. McDonald, very good, Hesselink! They've done it! 
so that's it for another episode of Celtic Daft. Remember, like I said, if you're listening on Apple, rate and review on there, Spotify, subscribe on that. Um, Chris, you'll be back this week on the main pod with Gredo and Stephen, and maybe one you and Cameron will be on to gloat this week oh, ahead oh. of the wager. Um, I'm pretty sure anybody listening to Celtic Daft has listened to the main pod as well. Stephen Purden put a bet on with Ewan. 50 quid cash for kids that Rangers would win against Hearts. Gave Ewan the draw. One each. Stephen Purden. Fair I'll play. I'll tell field. you this just now. If Hearts play the way they've been playing and Rangers play the way that they've been playing, you do not beat Hearts on Saturday. That was a decent, that was a decent wee. Attend to that now. I actually thought you was on this podcast there for a second. Nearly turned that off. Um, so yeah, so <laughs> you'll be back on the main pod. Um, I'm guessing you will come on this week to gloat to Stephen and rightly so, and that'll be fine. Um, but we will be back next week. We'll take a look at the St. Johnson game and the Ferenc Varos game here on Celtic Daft. Um, but until next time, nothing more to say, Crystal. Hey, hey. Audio Frontier.